antes de iniciar con las preguntas, yo siempre le digo a los invitados sobre recordar el primer trabajo de ellos. Eh, me parece como que interesante que nos cuente como cómo fue ese debut en este filme, que la verdad este, yo lo vi hace la semana pasada, si no estoy mal, y pues obviamente tiene una aparición corta, pero me gustaría saber la experiencia para como para entrar en materia y todo. Hey John, always does that. Eh, with all his guests, he always he always talks about his first work to know the beginnings, uh, how he's developing now. And man, John is crazy. I don't know where he was minimal knowledge. He told me that he saw it. So he wanna and we know that you do a small role, but if you can tell us about this movie, man, it's crazy. I don't know where does he the which, officer. Which which uh, which movie? Minimal knowledge. Minimal knowledge. Uh, that's so funny. Um, so that was, um, I think that was one of the first films I ever did. And it was, um, I was in, I was in college. I was still going to school for acting. And I mean, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for a minute for like a, a, mo a moment, but uh, my roommate in college, uh, who is also an actor and um, comedian, Uh, while we were going to school and pursuing our BFA, he also was friends with a local producer in New Jersey. Uh, and that's how that happened. They were shooting a movie and he was working on it. And he said, do you want to come out to Jersey and we'll find something for you to do on this film? And that's, that's really how that happened. Um, it was such a small moment in the film. I mean, I was basically a glorified background actor. That's that's what minimal knowledge is. I promise to translate everything to John. John from the world. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. I always do. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. Eh, yo creo que, bueno, esa es un, fue su primera aparición, pero sabiendo de que es que resumir la carrera de Gino es increíble. Es difícil, pero por lo menos puedo decir de que él sabe cómo es el es el rol de director. Me gustaría que me hablara sobre cómo fue la realización de Complex, porque, men, yo digo que Complex es una de las maneras de cómo un, una persona que va a otro país conoce la realidad. Me gustaría saber cómo que si esta película ayudará a que, bueno, algunos inmigrantes o personas que van de un lugar a otro, no solo en Estados Unidos, puedan aprender un poco a, a conocer a sí mismo, a aprender a sobrevivir. Knowing that you're the director from Complex, Do you think that this movie in particular can help people in the same situation? I don't know if immigrants or people that travel to another country to know more about themselves. Man, uh, uh, kudos from John, he watched it. I, 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 I don't want to be only a translator. I want to watch everything, everything. Wait a minute, John watched Complex? Yes. How? I don't know where. Where Complex? In Indigo Go. Estuvo Indigo. Hace, hace más de un año disponible. You, you might have watched a different complex. Yes. <laughs> Is another? Oh my God. You, we, no la tiene? Sí. You have I'm, to correct. I, I will, John, es que es una complex distinta. It's not released anywhere. Wow, man. Sí. Wow. Our complex is not released anywhere. It was one of the first things I ever did. And it was me and a group of friends. Uh, And it was about essentially the complex that we were living in a in the time, the, the apartment complex. And we tried to tie in this philosophical, meaningful thing where life is complex and so is where we live, literally. Uh, so that's what it was. Now, it was a blast. What, one thing I will tell you, I mean, you have not seen this. It's a comedy. And what you're describing sounds like a drama. <laughs> both, both. But it, we, we, I will tell John, don't, don't, don't edit this because it's great to know what is the real complex, man. Uh, the real complex was, I, I was young. I mean, it was almost 17 years ago now. And a group of us just decided we wanted to make a television pilot. And I still look, look back at that thing with fondness and all the, all the mistakes, the massive mistakes we made, the learning process in it, but it was so much fun. And, you know, for me, I, when people ask me like what success is, I'm always saying it's working on projects I love with people that I love and 
hopefully we're finding a way to get paid to do that. That's the trifecta. But truthfully, we were working on something that we loved with each other, with people that we love. And so we had a, we had a freaking blast doing it. We had so much fun. So it was a comedy. The, the short of it is it was a comedy and it was about two guys that moved out to LA and were, you know, pursuing their dreams. And they just run into this wacky complex of characters uh, that all live in the same apartment building as, as a, uh, as them and it's just hilarity ensues it's one one uh one obstacle after another that they're dealing with and that's what complex is and i will translate it for john to know that the complex that you're telling is more Whoa, interesting man, than the complex that he was telling man i really need to see the complex. john no it's, it's, it's okay know. john but whoever you thought i was in this other complex that's even more hilarious to me that you watched an entire thing and thought somebody else was me that i mean it's classic so Whoa. no man it, it's pure gold I, john john it's me aquí rompo la promesa porque el complex de él no se ha realizado en ningún lado, dice que, pero dice que es un proyecto que amó muchísimo, eh, es más porque él desea retomarlo, porque lo grabó hace mucho tiempo, y rehacerlo porque es, dice que el complex que tuviste, pues le parece gracioso en el sentido de que, wow, ¿cómo así viste una película donde viste a alguien parecido a mí? Pero dice que no, que el complex de él es de unas personas que se muda, mudan a un complejo, a un departamento, y es un problema tras otro, sí son de unas personas que se mudan a Los Ángeles, por cierto que yo le dije que pues que esto no se va a editar porque primero es bueno se conoce la trama el verdadero Homeless y dice que no que es gracioso que se está perdonado eh, eh, Gino en, en, en las entrevistas que te han hecho o algo no le han preguntado sobre Homeless o sea porque <ríe> qué locura me, que esta sea la primera vez but man this is a really comeback from John in another interview the people have asked you about Homeless or this is the first time no this is the first time hey, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why that's why I was like I was like how the hell did these guys find complex I mean it's it's near and dear to my heart but nobody has ever seen it I had a shaved head in it eh, eh, don 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 blame me it's all John's fault now okay John es que Gino es más en esta película se rapó wow yeah. wow man, man but thank you for telling me John, continue. You won't be well, forgiven. John, no serás perdonado. John, no, John, no. Will, John won't be forgiven. No, okay. It's okay. John, bueno, esa es una gran experiencia también. Yo puedo decirte que, bueno, eh, tras realizar su primer trabajo y que poco a poco se desprende todo, eh, yo sí quisiera saber sobre cómo fue de, como que la experiencia, alguna anécdota, de pronto corta, porque yo sé que son muchos los roles que tú tuviste, pero, por ejemplo, en en 42, en Takers, en Batalla de Los Ángeles, Shadows Blues, Ambition, man. o sea, son películas totalmente eh, programas únicos que yo digo, ¿cómo? ¿Cómo, este, ¿Cómo sobrevive este hombre? Porque es una máquina de guerra. Well, John has described you as a war machine, talking about, because we know that there is a lot of projects. But you can tell us something, anything, from one of them or everyone, because you were on 42, Takers, Battle of Los Angeles, Shades of Blood, and Ambitions. I know this a lot, but if you can ask you something a little bit from one of these projects or from all of them, go ahead. Well, there's so much to tell about each of them. Uh, I'll tell you something funny from, I mean, I thought it was funny, but like, well, fil filming 42. So just so you know, when I was, when I was young, the two things I wanted to do when I grew up was be an actor and, or a baseball player. I love baseball. It's my favorite sport. So being able to be in 42 was a big deal to me. Now it's funny because I was, I played Joe Garagiola And he was of the Cardinal segment. And the Cardinal segment of that film pretty much got completely wiped out and cut out. Uh, we were there for two months filming it. I was. Uh, I was over there over the course of two months. And it's funny, that entire segment is, is almost entirely cut out. But during that process, just 
just going through the baseball training again felt great. But it was funny because there were also former professional baseball players that were working on the film and guiding us. And one of the guys was CJ Nikowski, and he's a pitcher. Uh, I didn't know it was CJ. And I was playing a catcher in the movie. So I remember he says, oh, I want to, you know, throw a bullpen session. And I was like, well, I'll catch your bullpen. Okay, I'll catch you. And he's like, are you sure? Now I got this old mitt. So like, you know, we're playing, uh, it's, it's Jackie Robinson time. So I'm getting, I got this old mitt that's just barely the size of my hand. Okay. It doesn't have a lot of padding, nothing like that. And he's like, are you sure, man? I, I didn't have my mask with me, nothing. And I was like, yeah, no, it's fine. I'm like, I'll catch you. And I had no idea he was a major league pitcher. So I go to catch him and the first ball comes zipping in. I had never, I mean, we're talking like, you know, a 90 mile an hour fastball in his bullpen. I got no mask on. I'm I'm with this little mitt and I'm like, Oh, you know, and I'm trying to save face. I'm like, I'm a little scared because I was not expecting it. And I'm like, how am I going to get through this entire bullpen session with no mask with this old school mitt? But that was pretty funny. I had no idea. And then I walk up to him after. I'm like, uh, you throw pretty hard. And he's like, yeah. You know, he's like, I'm, I was a major league pitcher. But I'm like, I had no idea. And then he told me who he was. And I was like, oh, I know you. But it wasn't until after that moment that I actually knew it was him. And after he pretty much almost took my head off with his fastball. So. Wow. I will translate faster because it's a great history. John, it's this story of the 42 acá hay una parte medio triste porque tardaron, tardaron dos meses grabando las escenas del segmento donde sale, pero muchas de esas escenas las cortaron, aún así queda una anécdota muy buena, resulta que en uno de los ensayos, él le pide a una de las personas, pues que lance la bola lance la bola porque era el que la capturaba sin máscara, resulta que afortunadamente él la capturó porque iba a una velocidad grandísima. Resulta que el que se le lanzó era un pitcher profesional. No. Wow. 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 Está increíble. Excelente. También, este, esa es una gran experiencia de todas ellas. Eh, hay un personaje que la verdad me pareció muy bueno, que yo digo, men, eh, la verdad en SWATS, en Fire Island, Men, está en Netflix, puede ser que esté en otras plataformas también, pero yo puedo decirte que es una de las películas que para mí está infravaloradísima, porque es una película buenísima, no solo que está compartiendo con grandes estrellas, sino está con Gabriel Mars, sabemos que Gabriel Mars está en varias series importantes, pero hombre, ¿cómo es usted personificar el personaje de Wayne Walford? Y de pronto, ¿qué podemos aprender de él en la vida real? Hey, what can we learn from your character Wayne Warburg in Sweat Firefly by the way John is giving his movie review? Yeah, he's, one of, he's, say, he's saying that he really loves that movie. I need to watch it. So, please, the man. Well, if you find a way to eat in every scene, I guess you get to survive the movie. That's what you can learn from it. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm so used to dying in every film or getting my butt kicked, you know, um, that this, that was one of the few roles where I actually got to survive. So that was, uh, <laughs> that was interesting. Um, but yeah, I just, one thing I really remember about that was the, one of the quirks to the characters was we were just finding a way to have him eat in every scene. So I guess just, Find a way to stuff your face in every scene, and I guess you'll survive the movie. That's about all I could tell you. And have a sense of humor. Have a sense of humor. John, dice obviamente, en tono de broma, en tono en serio, que si aprender a comer y qué hacer. Tú sabes que el personaje de él, de hecho, acá hay un dato importantísimo, eh, y es una buena trivia. Es de los pocos proyectos donde Gino, el personaje de Gino, no muere. Generalmente él siempre lo mata en todas las películas o algo. No, acá logra sobrevivir. Pero él dice que acá el mejor consejo, independiente de lo de estar comiendo, porque tú ves que él come en toda la película, es tener un buen sentido de humor. Eso Pero es man. lo que se puede aprender de, de, Wayne, de Wayne. Yeah, man. O sea, por ejemplo, esta película fue que... O sea, yo, yo, yo dije, es algo diferente en Gino, porque Gino prácticamente queda como que guau. Wow. Es el que, 
no, o sea, no corrió tanto riesgo como lo perdió en los demás, <risa> sin spoiler, ¿no? Bueno, eh, ya pudimos hablar sobre lo que es esta magnífica película. También eh, tienes un cortometraje que has dirigido. Obviamente yo he visto fragmentos porque no lo he podido ver completo porque estaba antes en Daily Motion, pero puedo decirte que este corto en el que es este... Es interesante porque en Turning Point habla sobre 10 historias, pero en estas historias, ¿qué es la que cuál más te impactó? Que diga, oh, man, toqué fibra, esto es increíble. In all the histories that are told in the movie Turning Point, what is the one that would you move, that impact you more as a person? Um... So you watched Turning Point, John. You saw he, you saw Turning Point. John yeah. Yeah. Sí. yeah. John love you. So it's funny you bring that up. It's inter it's interesting that you bring that up. Um, to me, I I don't have a favorite. They're all. I thought they were all beautiful and vulnerable because uh, a lot of those were all of them were taken from the writer's true experiences in life. And then they were cast with someone other than the person who wrote them. So you don't know whose was what, you don't know who wrote what. Um, and it was a way to just have a little bit of an, a little bit of anonymity and also give them that permission to, to just be vulnerable and honest and express that. And so it ended, it was an experimental short film that resulted in, that, that, that was the culmination of a, a five-week workshop that we did together as peers. Uh, so for me, that was really special. And rather than have a favorite, favorite storyline, I'm just, I'm just proud of them and and us as a whole to just come together and just have the courage to do stuff like that, to go outside the box and do something. That's, that's how I feel about that. So that's fueron escritas por la misma persona, pero ponle que como que le dio a cada persona en, en vuelta ahí la libertad. O sea, es como que pon, ponte a pensar como que es la vida de él vista desde 10 perspectivas distintas, por así decirlo. Dice que para él fue un honor que siente muy bien de que haya visto este proyecto, vemos que es un proyecto que lo marcó bastante como actor y como persona. Oh, man, eso es increíble. Yes. Can I tell you one more thing? Uno más. Yes. Uh, so, we, in bringing that up, we are actually currently developing, um, inspired by that format, we are, we are developing and in pre-production right now to shoot a feature length version, not with, not with the, the same core concept, but uh, a slightly different concept in the fall, in October and November this year. So it's funny that you bring that up, but that was 10 years ago. And now the 10 year anniversary of it, we're, we're doing a feature length version with a slightly different concept. If you want to pass that on to him. Thank you, Andres. Of course, and that's the reason why this channel exists. John, como una especie de homenaje a este trabajo que se hizo hace 10 años, se va a tomar el mismo concepto y se va a hacer una película. Tal vez no lo que es Turning Point, pero el concepto, tú sabes, de 10 historias creadas bajo la vida de una misma persona, por así decirlo. Dice que, que le, por eso le encantó esa pregunta y que obviamente me pide el favor de traducir, sabes que es un favor que hago con mucho gusto y para ti son buenas noticias, ¿cierto, John? Claro, buenas noticias. Good news. Good news. Eh, Buenas bueno, noticias. Antes de poder continuar, quiero bueno, darle la palabra a nuestra querida amiga Mirai, que obviamente la saludamos, que es gran fan del trabajo de Gino y bueno, de un trabajo que hay. Así que Mirai, bienvenida, welcome. Welcome Mirai, as always. Um, we are going to give you, yes, this is space. Uh, Gino, she is, one, is a friend from the channel. She, in fact, he, she was one of the persons that we interviewed with before. But she's a fan from your work and one word in a specific. So Mirai, the camera is yours. Ask whatever or tell whatever you want to, you know. Okay. What was your favorite scene? In the yeah. Vampire Diaries. Yeah. What, what was my favorite scene in what? In the Vampire Diaries. 
my God. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because, all right, a friend of mine, a, a, a local, a local, a local uh, college student here, a uh, family friend, he is, you know, I, I don't know a lot about this, but he's on TikTok and stuff and he does, he does all that influencer stuff. So he asked me if I would shoot a little TikTok video with him today, literally today. And it's sort of making fun of myself in the Vampire Diaries. Cause you know how like I would put up my hand and people would go flying off walls. Um, so we did a mock version of that today at the gym for his, for his TikTok channel. So why that's funny to me is we literally did that maybe two hours ago and he just sent me the clip. And, <laughs> and so I guess, I guess that would be my answer. My favorite thing was that I just, just went like that and people would go flying off walls. And I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know it's not very deep or philosophical, but. <laughs> okay. Man, in fact, I, I am I am waiting for a friend. She's also a fan of your work there, but she's not here. I will ask you the favor at the end to send her a hi. Well, it will be at the end, so don't worry. Sure, sure. But because, yeah, John, ya, ya lo comprometí con el saludo y creo que tú entendiste, ¿no? Hace dos horas acá de grabar un video en TikTok con un amigo donde él se mofa de las escenas, ¿te acuerdas de esta escena? No? Él con la mano mandando a la gente a la pared, dice que esas son sus escenas favoritas, que no son muy filosóficas nada, pero que eso lo ha llevado incluso pues un amigo, él mandó ese video, yo creo que después hay que pedirle ese video, hombre. Increíble, sí, que no, lo pida luego. Eh, Man, you have to send us, you have to send us that TikTok video later. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what his link is. I don't even have TikTok. So, you know, as soon as, as soon as if I figure out how to do it, I'll send it to you. I'll, I'll email it to you or whatever. Thank you. Yeah. Que apenas lo tengan o lo envían. Excelente. Yo, so I'm at the gym and I'm pretty sure Maddox from Vampire Diaries is here. I'm hip flexors right now. Excuse me. Hey, are you, can I talk to you real quick? Yeah, are you Maddox from Vampire Diaries by any chance? I don't know who or what that is, man. It's a it's a villain, a TV show. You look just like him, I swear. So I, I don't I don't know what this. I don't watch the Vampire Diaries. So right. I get the wrong guy. Man. Ah, I'm sorry. All right, have a good workout. I'm pretty sure he's lying to me. That looks just like him. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, just one more time. I, Are I'm you sorry. kidding me, man? I'm, so, I'm sorry, but that looks exactly like. You sure that's not you? Dude, I don't know who that is. I don't know what the show is. I'm just trying to work on my glutes. Seriously, what's the problem? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just love the show. I don't get it. I love it. I'm sorry. I just love Maddox. I love the show. You look it's just like, like him. You're messing with I'm not. I'm not. I'm telling you that's him. He's definitely lying to me. I'm on the treadmill. Oh, hold on. Hold on. He's leaving. Maddox. Hey, Maddox. Ma Maddox. I know it's you. <laughs> Got it. Who's your favorite character from the Vampire Diaries? My favorite character? Um, you know, I auditioned for Klaus. And that was how I ended up getting the role of Maddox, was I auditioned for Klaus and which was a completely different type of character and completely opposite from the way that I played Maddox. So I loved Klaus because he got to be, he just got to be funny and he was so snarky. Um, I liked that kind of, I liked that kind of character. So I would say that was probably my favorite character was Klaus. Oh, okay. I didn't know that you had listened for Klaus. I did. And then and I never auditioned for Maddox. I auditioned for Klaus and they turned around. They liked the tape, but they didn't think I was right for it. And they said, we want you to do Maddox. And so I thought I thought that they would want me to come in and maybe bring a little bit of cl of what I did in the audition to Maddox. And it was not they, they just wanted me like dead behind the eyes. No, no. Rea everything was like deadpan. If you remember anything I would say, it was just very matter of fact. There was almost no emotion behind it. So it was completely, it was, it was complete opposite of 
of my take on Klaus. So, oh. yeah. They probably just liked your look and everything and was like, <laughs> okay, you're perfect for Maddox. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I need, to, I need to translate, John. Es que increíblemente él audicionó para Klaus. Wow. Man. Y resulta que él incluso pensó que elementos para Klaus iban a usar en Mouths y no, algo muy, muy distinto. Do you know, because you are the third person from that show that had appeared on the channel. You got the beautiful and amazing Hannah Firman and the great Jaden Kane, man. So it's always great because, man, it's crazy. This is global. I mean, in Latin America, huge. In Europe, that show is huge, man. I, I, I know that it sounds crazy, but in fact, in, in, in HBO, Latin America is one of the most viewed shows. What is huge? Yes. No, what is I didn't hear. Uh, no, the, the Vampire Diaries. The Vampire uh, Diaries. Oh, yes. Oh, big but, cult following. Yes, man. And we are glad because with you, we had the amazing Hannah Firman and the amazing Jaden Kane here in the channel. Talking some little stories about. Yo sé que has estado en todos los, los géneros posibles del séptimo arte, tanto cine y televisión. Pero, men, yo soy testigo de que vi, obviamente, en plataformas digitales, en Telegram, por así decirlo, The Fire. Men, tu papel como Harris es una locura porque, primera vez, para mí, ¿no? Que te veo en en una historia de terror, y lo haces bien, hombre. Eh, ¿Le gustaría incursionar más en ese tema? Eh, ¿Qué historia de pronto, si a ti te dan un... decides ser el villano o el protagónico, pero qué tipo de historia te gustaría hacer? Escribe el nombre en el chat, por favor. Bueno. Ok. Uh, it's because I was lost in the translation, man. Uh, because John said something that sounds so different. Man, you, you, John really love your word in, I hope I pronounce it right, the fair, the fire, as fair. Harris. The fair. The fair. He the fair. said the fire. Okay, don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, knowing that you had made a lot of genres and a lot of formats, uh, television, movies, do you want to keep doing more roles like this? I don't know. Uh, or telling another kind of, of, of horror or terror history? Uh Yes. So what I, what I really, um, there was a couple things about that. You know, I got to give credit to the screenwriter, um, Brina Kelly, um, and the director, DC Hamilton, because in producing that, they really came together and we, we shot that entire feature film in six days. And it was, you know, pretty much a micro budget film. It, there was no money. We just made it happen. And um, what I loved about that was I thought it was a challenge and I, I'm always up for taking risks and, and, it, and, but the genre, yes. So I'll tell you a quick, quick uh, little anecdote. So a buddy of mine, He was really big. He's, he's no longer with us. He's passed on, but he was a director and he loved horror, horror movies. Um, it was like one of his favorite genres. And The Fair is more of like a thriller or, or sci-fi or fantastical in some ways. But, but I haven't really done a lot of horror. I haven't done that. And it was never something that I initially was excited about. But it's, it, but ever since he passed on um i've had this desire this urge to get into the horror genre whether it's directing something or acting in it i just think it would be so much fun it's something i haven't done yet in 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 20 years in this business i haven't really done a horror movie and i just think it would be a blast to do i would love to do that yeah and it will be great to us for us to review it and to watch it man. <laughs> Yes. I will translate. John, es que es una historia muy bella. Esto, bueno, es de Fer, ¿no? No, de Fire. En The okay. Fair, esto, increíblemente, si tú sí la viste, John, fue grabada en seis días. No sé cómo hicieron. Sí. sí. Lo otro increíble es que, ¿sabes? Es una película que tiene un presupuesto muy pequeño. Y en los 20 años de carrera de, de Gino, si tú te das cuenta, él no ha hecho mucho terror. De hecho, esa película es sci-fi. Es un thriller de sci-fi. Dice que nunca lo consideró, pero como homenaje a un amigo que falleció, que oh, le había hecho, sí. 
porque tú en algún momento no haces un proyecto y pues él hizo Efer como homenaje al amigo si quiere seguir incursionando en el terror yo dije que para otros sería un honor reseñar o hablar del próximo de un proyecto que él tenga de terror yo creo que sería increíble y sería un paso buenísimo para la carrera no porque se ha hecho de todo excelente sí y que lo sentimos por el amigo no yes man and we feel sorry for your friend but this is really a beautiful story that you tell us man Sí. Okay, vamos con la última pregunta que para mí, bueno si la he pensado bien Gino toda esta semana es que yo diciéndole a tu manager Sara, no, esta pregunta voy a cometer de pronto esta pregunta yo te la quiero hacer porque cuando hablamos sobre temas, sobre ese tema de la sexualidad y todo, pero hombre, mil puntos de la de luz de luz es increíble, man. o sea, es del año 2008, puedo decir de que antes de que comenzara el apogeo de series, películas increíbles que consideran nostálgicas, eh, para ti, ¿cómo consideras, bueno, la sexualidad en el cine? ¿Piensas de que de pronto debe mejorarse más aplicándolo a esta película? Más, eh, ¿Qué aprendiste del personaje de Jerry? Man, eh, as a final, I think, what do you feel or think about the character of Jerry and a thousand points of light, knowing that this project is, is, is in fact, is, is, is really a very early, early project from 2008, but John feel that is so ahead of his time because we later see more projects talking about sexuality, but this was before, before all of that. What is your view about this character of Jerry? I'm just baffled how John gets a hold of these movies. Where, where, where did you find, Yo where did you find thing. Thousand Points of Light? Daily Motion. Daily Motion, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. So it's been a while. It's been a while. So what I'll tell you about that is um, it, it's been a while. It's hard for me to even remember that what, like how we developed that character. But I remember we did it without a basic script. It was a blueprint. It was almost improvised drama. So um, the director of that was the same director of Minimal Knowledge. And the same producer also produced Minimal, minimal Knowledge. So we became friends on Minimal Knowledge when my roommate had introduced me to that producer. And then they asked me to do Thousand Points of Light. Uh, and I just remember the character... It was it felt so experimental in in the sense where we just created a backstory you created a relationship with the other actors and then there was some basic dialogue but it was completely okay if we went went off of it and went away from it does that make sense you following me did he freeze again oh man oh, son. <laughs> oh no can you translate Yes, I know. I, the, the last thing I, I, I listened was that you tell that it was like a blueprint and they like somehow gave you the freedom to do the interaction with the, the, the other characters. Man, you had to forgive my. Yes. So, you know, we created a backstory. We, we created a relationship with the other characters. And then there was some basic dialogue, but then we just let it go. See, we, we went to see where the. See, We just took the ride to see where the scene took us, if that makes any sense. So, no, forgive my internet, but yes, I listened to okay. everything. I would ask, like, John, es que es increíble, bueno, eh, y me siento también porque tú preguntaste por minimal knowledge, ¿no? Sí, mm -hmm. productor y, y director. Dice que, bueno, se hicieron amigos, obviamente, tú sabes, por el roommate. John, es que en realidad solo se le dio la idea. Y todo fue de cierta forma improvisado porque se creó fue una historia sobre el personaje y él cómo interactuaba con los demás. Vamos a darle un fuerte aplauso a Gino. ¡Oh! Oh, oh. Gino, Gino, Gino. <risa> Ven, este es un espacio donde ya puedo decir de que finalizamos. Pero bueno, hombre, un saludo para Colombia, eh, México, donde está Mirai. No sé en, en qué sitio está Mirai, pero bueno, un saludo para todo, todo el mundo. Y bueno, tus redes sociales y algún próximo proyecto. ¿no? The camera is yours. Eh... Send a hi to wherever you want, to the channel, to Colombia, 
the people that is watching. Uh, tell the social media so people can follow you. And if there is a project that people that you want the people to stay attend, go ahead, man. The camera is yours. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. it it's it's been my pleasure. You guys are a lot of fun and gals. And um, I've never been to Colombia, but I've always wanted to go. I don't know what part you all are from, but I I I would love to come see Colombia at some point. Uh, so a big shout out to everyone there. And those of you who have watched anything I've been in, thank you for that. Thanks for, thank you for following that and supporting it. Um, the only thing I would say to come watch out for is, uh, I've been doing a lot more producing and directing and right now, um, in association, um, with Tower Cop Creations, which is a, a South African, production company, a female uh, director, producer, writer, Uga Carlini and I, we are putting together, like I said, the feature, a feature version inspired by Turning Point. So we're doing that film. We're doing that feature this fall. I'm really excited about that. Uh, it's called Love the End. And it's all about togetherness. At a time where so many people are divided, I think uh, we wanted to put something out there to say, uh, we're not so different, you and I. So uh, thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah. No, man. John, eh, la foto o, o el saludo a mi amigo? Bueno, primero la foto, luego ya tu espacio. Okay, Fer, before I ask you the favor to say a hi to my friend, we are going to take a picture so we can share to the social media. So, man, please to give, do me a favor. For another fan of the Vampire Diaries, say a hi. She's called Mariale. It's Maria Alejandra, but we say it Mariale. 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 Yes. Mariale. So say hi, Mariale. Is she watching? Is she going to be watching? Yes, I will. We will. Mariale. Hi, Mariale. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting uh, all the content. Um, really appreciate it. I hope you're having a good. Is she Colombian? Yes. All right. Well, more of a reason to come to Colombia. <laughs> so, you know, she, and, and she's gorgeous, man. Beautiful. <laughs> like every Colombian woman, man. Eh? Yes. We live in Colombia. <laughs> Colombia is a place for beautiful, beautiful women. Oh, my so, goodness. <laughs> and, John, creo que el espacio para Mirai, ¿cierto? Sí, claro. Eh, Mirai, Mirai eh, este es tu espacio final. No sé qué quieres decirle de último, que de pronto te salude a ti de, como despedida, no sé. Yes, Mirai, the, you will be the person that close this with the best way. So this, this is space for you. Uh, you want to say something to Dino? Uh, I don't know. This, the camera is yours, Mirai. Tell whatever you want to Gin. That's a fine. You're uh, muted. The mute. Microphone. <laughs> Microphone <laughs> on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this interview. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Um, shout out to Colombia, shout out to Turkey, shout out to Trinidad, shout out to everyone watching this. Have a good day. And you want to say something to Gino? You want to oh. say something to Gino? Oh, um, I love all of your work and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It was good to meet you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you too. Oh, oh, you know, thank you. Yo, Yo solo que quiero decir. darte las gracias por la oportunidad. Dale mis agradecimientos a Sara y Men. O sea, admiramos tu trabajo y la verdad se nota el esfuerzo que has hecho. Y bueno, no sé si esto sea como, no, pues no como una promesa, sino eh, cuando recibas el premio Oscar o el Emmy Globo de Oro, pues que se acuerden de nosotros alguna vez que eso que ha pasado I, I will translate not only the thing that John said but I will add something uh, John has said that yeah man when you want a bit of work please remember us but man I'm so happy from this interview because we talk about complex turning point the next project no man for me it was a great time to have you here and sorry for all my problems translating man no, it was like a walk down memory lane. I haven't talked about those projects in so long. So, so thank you. Uh, hey, thank you for your generosity and your kindness. And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. 
Thank you so much, man. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Good weekend. Thank you, Mirai. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Gino. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mirai. Thank you, Gino. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.